Okay, first I hit with some smoked paprika, a little chili powder, granulated garlic, a little cumin, Chinese five spice. Man, you overdo this, it just blows the dish. You do it the right way and add just that tiny bit, you'll really enjoy it. Also, just a little bit of dry mustard, okay? Some salt, pepper. So there's the dry rub. Let's talk about the duck breast. So this is a really family-friendly and cook-friendly dish. Scoring the duck fat, of course, gives the opportunity for it to render the fat down, still keeping the skin on. A really nice, generous rub with a little bit of five spice in it. And cooking it on the grill, off the direct flame, so it has a chance to render down, feel the heat, covered with the cast iron. Perfect way to do it, flip it over, let it finish cooking out, let it rest a little bit, slice it, medium rare, medium, it was outrageous. Now, everybody's got their feeling about duck. A lot of time it's been overcooked, a lot of time it's just been funky duck, okay? But this duck, you're in luck, because what we did is we scored it, then made this fantastic dry rub, little five spice, cumin, salt, pepper, paprika, ready? You wanna check it out? And we did it on the grill. I didn't have a lid for the barbecue, so I just used the cast iron. But check this out. Rendered down fat, low and slow. See how that fat's cooked out? Just left me with the skin. Oh, yeah. That's good looking duck. Okay, we'll cover it back up. We'll let it continue to go. A little dome heat happening here. What do I got over here? Brussels sprouts, a little dry vermouth, some garlic, some onions, a little salt and pepper. Made the tinfoil pouch. It's Thanksgiving. We're cooking outside. I would like to try to put it all on the grill if I can. There we go. All right? So far, so good. <laughs> Look at that. Rendered down. All you have to do is make sure that you don't go too hot on that flame. And when that fat's first starting to render down from that duck, you don't go too hot with the flame because it just sits there and all that duck fat comes up and burns the duck and it's terrible. So this right here, we've rendered it down. Nice crusty skin. We got all kinds of great spices on it. We've got the five spice. We've got the garlic powder, the chili powder, the salt, the pepper, the duck fat, naturally basting the duck as we go. And are you ready? You wanna see it? Look at that tender. Medium rare, beautiful duck, rendered down fat, little crispy skin on top. And when it goes low and slow like that, oh. The only thing I don't have to give thanks for is I only cook two breasts. I need 20. Mm. Look at that. Pile it on, fan it out. Mm. Fantastic little bite of that slaw. Now, root vegetables are great to work with. I mean, everybody loves it. We love potatoes, right? Sweet potatoes play a big role. But one of my favorites to put in this is the celery root. And that's this big monster that you see here. How many times you walk by that in the grocery store and said, I don't know exactly what it is or who's eating it, but I'm not buying it. Well, this is really one of my favorites. So, take a look at it. How do you clean it up? Well, I'm gonna have to slice it off and get it, you know, just get right down to the base of it, take the skin off it. And that's actually gonna happen with all of these. It's gonna happen with the parsnips, it's gonna happen with the sweet potatoes, and then it's also gonna happen with the straight up russet, okay? Here's the mandolin, probably one of the best tools that you have in the kitchen. You can adjust the height on the deck like this that adjusts the size of the slice. Really nice, easy to wash. So you put it on top of a bowl like this, grab whatever veggies you're gonna start working with, and go. All right, check that out. All of them sliced up. The celery root, the sweet potato, the parsnip, and the russet all done. About eh, a cup or so of heavy cream. We'll get a little bit of salt and some fresh cracked black. Get in, let's see how much do I have here. Yeah, not quite all of this. Gorgonzola. There you go. Ah, oh, it smells dynamite already. Uh, a little tarragon, a little anise flavor in there. Goes great with these root vegetables. Give that a little sprinkle. Okay. And we get a little chicken stock down. Oh, I love these tabs. There we go. Okay, not too much. 
There you go. And then the last thing, which you know I gotta do, is hit a little bit of minced garlic in there. And I don't use the press that often, but it seems that when I really wanna get it small and quick like this, that'll work out perfect. Let me just give it one more. Okay. There we go. Now, I'm gonna cook all these down. Now, why did I put them all together? You know, why are they all the same size? Well, because I want them to cook evenly, and the idea is here is I can kind of mix this whole thing up, throw it into this baking dish, cover it with some tin foil, 400 degrees for about an hour. I pull this out, it's gonna be bubbly, hot, and delicious. Still sizzling. Right on there. So we got sweet potatoes, we've got the parsley, we got sweet potatoes, we got celery root, we've got the whole thing, the parsnips going inside of there. Oh, on point. I got some pasilla peppers and some serranos that are going together to be stuffed, get this, under the skin of a brined turkey. Got a big 14 pounder that's sitting over there that I just brought out of the garage fridge. Can do time for up to, uh, you know, sometimes you can even, on the big ones, get up there into 48 hours, but 24 hours is good for me. Okay, so three of these pasilla peppers and the serrano go in. I'm gonna add that garlic in just a second, but I need some green onions. And what I said is it's gonna go under the skin is that the bird's been brined. Then I'm gonna make this mixture, hit it with some lime juice. Once you brine a bird, you never go back the conventional way. I've already roasted the peppers here, put some oil on them, sweated them, took the skins, the seeds, and the stems off. There we go. Just get this garlic in, lime zest, and some lime juice are also gonna go into that, and a little bit of cilantro. There we go, some fresh cilantro always sitting on the counter. Okay, so we'll get the cilantro chopped up. So all kinds of great flavors. And it does have kind of a uh, Latin theme, a Mexican theme to it. But if you know some of the stories of my family and I, we love to go down to Mexico. Actually, before I do that, I gotta zest this thing. I hate that. I hate when I go and squeeze them and then I try to go and, and zest a pre-squeezed lime, but really nice essence of the lime, getting in there with, these, uh, with the zesting. Okay, and one thing after this, a little bit of cumin. Now I'm working fast, I don't want that garlic to burn. I haven't been a, had a chance to move it yet. Okay, a little lime juice. Let me grab a little cumin. Uh, there we go, ground cumin. I don't want the cumin seed. Touch of that. Now I know what I said, but I don't want you to get on my case about this. I said that I wasn't gonna burn the house down. It was about big flavor, not big flames, but I have to just add a touch of tequila to this. There we go, did I flame this thing? There we go. Come on. Like, you didn't expect me to do that. Okay, so let me cool this down. Get this sheet tray out. And why the sheet tray? I, don't, I want this stuff to actually cool down before I uh, stuff it in the bird. In the big tub, brined in the garlic, peppercorns, bay leaf, the uh, agave nectar, and the salt. Big roasting pan here. One, two, three into the roasting pan. The oven was preheated at 350. There we go. Okay, look at that. Now look at this. Big 14 pounder, I brined it. Then I stuffed these peppers up underneath the skin of it. So look at that. Look at the peppers and the onions and everything right underneath there, fantastic. Some good looking cauliflower. Okay, we've got a little bit more, almost the whole thing. I'm gonna save all these uh, pieces that I've sliced off here for my compost. So these go down, okay? Slide this off to the side. We'll get into the other one here. Now this I'm gonna roast. Now I like, anytime I can roast something, you know, doing a uh, puree, well that's got a nice silky taste to it, but I wanna do a little bit of a roast on it, get some caramelization going to it. So I'll cut these up, uh, make them a little bit smaller so they cook kinda quick. 
and leave a little bit of stem to them. Now the ones that I'm doing there in the, uh, for the puree, I can leave a little bit more stem because it's gonna get ground up. Let's see, looks good. I don't need too much because this is gonna kind of work as a garnish. So I'll hold this one off. See, I gotta decipher what I'm cooking and what I'm not. There we go. Okay, get a little roasting pan here. Turn that knife over, there we go, okay. Little roasting pan down. I have got more cauliflower. Okay, now hit this, a uh, little extra virgin olive oil. Just a liberal amount there, but not too much to make them greasy. There we go, hit it with a little bit of salt. And then I always have a little reserve of some fresh cracked pepper laying around, so I don't have to sit there and crank it the whole time. Okay, this is gonna go over into the oven at 350. Eh, 25 minutes, look to see where it is, kind of on the browning, okay? So those will go up. Check them, turn them, hit a little more, little more olive oil if you need be. Let me get some heat on this bad boy. Now I'm gonna go down with a little milk. Now simmering it in the milk, well what's gonna happen is I'm gonna keep everything kind of in this simmer and the milk's gonna kind of work as my cream when I get into the pureeing factor. So four or five cups, just kind of looking that you have enough to kind of cover up all of the cauliflower. It's gonna float for a second, okay? There we go, get that into my recycling. Hit a little bit of salt on top of that. Simmer 20, 25 minutes, that's good. Okay, so we get this into the food processor. You can do it with a blender as well. And it's nice to get the cauliflower facial here. Okay, so these are nice and tender, kind of about a fork tender. And I'm gonna reserve some of this liquid if I need it. But we'll see first just where I stand. Let's see here. Get a little bit of butter into this. And you can kind of manage that as you like. And a little bit of salt and pepper. Fresh cracked pepper always standing by. There we go. Let's hit that bad boy on there. I'm gonna cover this a little bit. I don't, I get in trouble with the kitchen being a mess. Okay, so let that go there. Just trimming a little off the top. Actually, there's some uh, chopped chives that I'm cutting onto my pureed cauliflower mash. Now, I'll tell you, if you ever think that there's a substitute for mashed potatoes, that's it. So these have been in, I don't know, about 25 minutes. I took the florets, hit them with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, a little salt and pepper, kind of put a little caramelization, a little roast on them, and these are gonna go right in here on top. Okay, there we go. We've got a shaved kale and root vegetable salad. It's fresh and crunchy with quinoa and a red wine vinaigrette. You got the garlic going. Yeah. We're going to make a dressing here in a second. Let's talk about quinoa. Are you a quinoa fan? I love quinoa. Because of the, what we do, like in my leisure, I want to eat really well, really healthy, so quinoa is that. He wants to eat really well and really healthy, so when he comes to visit me in California and we make pizzas till 2 in the yeah. morning. Hey, salt red. Yeah. Okay, now here's the thing with the quinoa. There's a big question that goes on. Rinse it or don't rinse it. Now, when I grow it out in the garden, I rinse it. A lot of times when I buy it, I won't rinse it. Some brands I want to rinse, some I don't. Right. So are you a rinse guy or non-rinse guy? You know what, it depends on if I'm making it for my son, we like to rinse, but if it's just like adults at the house, we don't rinse. Okay, I'm not rinsing them. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna go about a cup, of, a cup of quinoa, salt right there. All right, let me get a little stock down. I've, to I've toasted up the quinoa. Now we'll go down with about three cups of veg stock. Let this come to a simmer. There we go. Okay. Veg now, you stock. Know what? Question for you. So, on, wait one second. Let me just make sure I'm caught up where I'm at. Veg okay. stock, salt. That's good. Let me give this a little stir. Bring it to a simmer. 15 minutes. Turn it off. I'll be in good shape. G, how we looking? Doing good. I'm okay. gonna mince up this shallot real quick. So a little garlic, about a tablespoon of garlic, a tablespoon of shallots, mm -hmm. um, a tablespoon of chives, okay. red wine vinegar, olive oil, salt, pepper, there's okay. your vinaigrette, got okay? It, it. So I'm working some carrots right now, and I got a little kale to go together, and this is all for the red quinoa salad, and also another favorite of G's and mine. And this quinoa, you know, I'll tell you something, talk about versatile. So much you could do with that quinoa. Okay, so let's talk about holiday times at the G-Man's house. Everybody cooks. So it's lots of meat, you know, whether it's ham, turkey, That's chicken, in the holidays. short ribs, yeah, and lots of vegetables. Number one favorite item for the holiday show. I mean, the one thing that you say, I know it's the holidays because I'm having... Mac and cheese. Mac and cheese. 
cheese? Mac and cheese, absolutely, yeah. Really? Yeah, man, mac and cheese. Like, cause now you can do so much with mac and cheese. Back in the day, it was just cheesy mac and cheese. Now you can do mac and cheese with bacon, you can do mac and cheese with truffles. Your mac and cheese has, I mean, everything except the kitchen sink in it. Well, I mean, I remember because I made like 5,000 of them. There's only the six cheeses in my mac and cheese. Okay. Man, I got the kale salad, got some carrots in there, I got some radishes. I'm um, gonna put the quinoa, and I got the vinaigrette, which is red wine, and I'm ready to knock it out. Looking dynamite. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, so here goes the, um, we got the kale in there. This is the real key to it, is the red quinoa. Let me give you a little sprinkle of that so you kind of work it in. Awesome. There you go. Feeling good about that. Okay. And now, G, as soon as you're done with that, that looks fantastic. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, man. Pan roasted turquetta. Let's talk about uh, the, the have, you, have you had porchetta, right? You've had porchetta? Yeah. You're a porchetta fan? So I want to make turchetta. I, it's Thanksgiving time. I don't want to make, I'd love to have some porchetta right now. But I'm going to make turchetta. So I've got this beautiful turkey breast skin on. And what I'm going to do is make a rub for the inside of it. And then kind of pull the skin back and right. Well, you'll see how this is going to go together. So excuse me, like kind of working amongst giants. Um, we're going to get, yeah, no kidding. Get a little bit of garlic. Um, a little sage, a little fresh sage. You want to pull me it's some rosemary. rosemary? So we drop that in, Desk. There. But anyhow, here, I'll give you this, Desk. You start. I get to do it? Oh, yeah. Let me throw some fennel on there. This is awesome. This is really great. I mean, I love having Hunter here to help me, but I got four people that know way more than he is. Okay. Uh, yeah, a little... Uh, oh, now you're just ad-libbing? Uh, you're just going to start throwing in? That's how Ryder does it. He stands on the I'm step like, and I does gotta it. i got to get some height All right, some fennel seed, a little chili flake, some salt, some pepper, some garlic, some sage. Uh, and you know what? Let's start working that out. And who took the yellow? Oh, there's the yellow one. You got it? I got it. Fantastic. So back to this whole porchetta thing. You've had porchetta? Yes. You've had porchetta? I love porchetta. Okay. So porchetta is where you take the pork loin, you wrap it in the belly. So basically you're wrapping it in all this bacon. Uh, and then you roast it off. You get this nice crackling on the outside of it. So you get tender meat, you get juicy fat. Well, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to do it with a turkey breast. So the bone is out, but the skin is on. So the first thing I'm going to do is kind of peel a little bit of this skin away. Because what I don't want to do is roll the skin into the turkey. OK? How are we doing on my great rub, by the way? You got it? Got it. Fantastic. While Dusky does that, I'm going to show you this little butterflying method on this turkey breast. So now what happens is I'm butterflying this open. And that's just so I can get all these nooks and crannies in here filled with a little bit of this great rub. OK, so I'll butterfly into that. Don't want to pierce through the skin. Okay, there we go. So now we'll drop this in. So the rosemary, the thyme, a little sage, the garlic, the salt, the pepper, okay? There we go. Here, babe. Smear this all inside of it, and this is like we're doing a real porchetta, but we're doing it with the turkey, okay? Hit a little bit of salt, a little extra pepper, just a touch. There we go. Now, this is the side that has the skin connected, so I'm gonna roll from here. Uh, Dust, could you find me some twine? It's around here somewhere. Look at this. Over the top, over the top into itself, and then I bring the skin with it, okay? So it's all wrapped in the skin. There we go. Dust, you want to come underneath that with a, with a loop, but right up here in the center of the top of the breast, okay? Got it. You want to tie it or you want me to tie it? I'll tie it. Let's talk about turquetta. Turquetta has got some thyme in there. It's got some sage, some garlic, some salt, and some pepper. So, onto the skin. That's what we're talking about. Okay, so I'll put a little sear on this all the way around, then go to the oven with it. So there's no bone in this, but we kept the skin, did a nice job trussing it. What do you think of that? Dude, that is golden. That and is gorgeous. Beautiful. Welcome. Watch out, coming through. Hot, hot. Oh, that's gonna rock. And here comes Roxy the dog. She's just looking for some pickup. Um, but I gotta hit a little chicken stock in here because I'm making a little pan jus. Uh, but this turquetta, talk about a fantastic piece. Typically, it's, you know, I have a bunch of folks hey, over here. Help. Did you, uh, oh, 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 he oh, returns. Yeah. What's up, Bob? How are you? How are you? So my son Hunter has been off at school at UNLV where I went to college and uh, he returns in time. Fantastic. Take that, slice it up, I'll be at the table. No, I'm just kidding. Um, Hunter, this is a beautiful turquetta falling in the form of porchetta, and I trust it. So here we go, Hunter. This is all skin. This is all white meat. There's a platter right back there, if you wouldn't mind grabbing that for me. 
truss this up really nice so this cooks even. So it cooks evenly. I think I might have trussed it with a little extra twine. I don't, last thing I want to do is serve somebody a big piece of twine. Okay, looking good. What do you think? Yeah. There we go. Nice slices. I mean, you know how people all fight for that. I want the breast, I want the white meat. This is it, baby. This is all white meat, and you're just looking at some fantastic color inside of this. Do we have to serve it, or can we just eat it over here? I like it. Now they're standing there waiting for me. I can see them. They sound like, they sound like our dogs were ready to feed them. <laughs> These guys are sitting over there so hungry. And what a star-studded cast of chefs to have show up. G. Garvin coming all the way from Atlanta. Dusky traveling all the way from Sebastopol. What was that? Solid 15 minute drive. Solid 15 minutes yeah. all the way here. The way. Okay, Hunter, lift her up. Watch yourself. Oh, this is gorgeous. That turned out just perfect. Look at that shingle out like that. And last thing I got here, Bubba, hold tight, is I deglazed that pan with just a little bit. Oh, that's hot. A <laughs> little bit of chicken stock. Right over the top. I won't get you, I don't think. Oh, that's a little hot. Was it a little warm? A little bit. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> All right, son. Stand over with the chefs. Let's right. deliver this to the table. They're going to love this. Basalmic braised leg of lamb. So pressure cooker, you know it's one of my favorite utensils to use. And I've got this screaming hot stove out here. But you don't need a really hot stove. All you need is a pressure cooker that can handle everything. So get some heat going. Little bit of olive oil. And let's talk about leg of lamb. It's nice and trim, not too much fat on it. Liberal with the salt and pepper. Fresh cracked black pepper. Drop those in. Lamb's got a nice sear to it. To the other side. Now, I had this, I had this fantastic leg of lamb that I had the butcher go and break down for me. What I had him do is take it and just really nicely, he just opened it up, took the leg out, gave me all the meat, trimmed a little bit of the fat, and that's what's taking place over here. As I got this leg of lamb that I've been searing off, look at that. Look at the nice caramelization and crunch. I couldn't fit the bone in there. I mean, I'm going to fit the bone in there, but I couldn't really get the roast on it. So throw it in the oven, regular oven, wood-fired oven, doesn't matter. Okay, now we get into this basalmic braised little bit of jalapeno. It just, we're gonna go with a nice rough cut. All these veggies, because we're gonna strain this out later. Red bell pepper. The real key is coming up here in just a second, and that's gonna be the basalmic. There we go. Put onion. This could all be done ahead of time also. Little fennel. Fennel goes in this really great. Think about mixing that basalmic. Okay. Little chopped garlic. Don't want to chop them down too much because they've got to survive in this pot and not burn. So we're gonna let this all sweat right now. I'm gonna bring the heat up just a touch. We start with some tomato paste, half a cup, a little molasses, that's the real kicker. Maybe two tablespoons, one, two, some beef stock, low sodium. Remember we seasoned, liberally we seasoned that lamb. And of course some balsamic vinegar. This is Flavor City right here, folks. Okay, about two cups of that. So now back in, nestle all of these inside. You gotta be conscious of this. If you're gonna go to the top, you only can go about three quarters of the way. And then I'm gonna throw the bones right in there for good flavor on top of it. We will lock the pressure cooker down. Okay, now here's the key to this. Every pressure cooker is different. Get to know your pressure cooker. Become friends with your pressure cooker because here what here's what happens. We're gonna get this up to about 15 PSI, and that's the perfect time, perfect uh, pressure to cook it with. And about medium heat, about 45 minutes, gonna be super shredded part tender. Now I've got it in the pressure cooker with a uh, little molasses, some beef broth, we've got a little balsamic, actually a lot of balsamic. Now you see what I just did right there? I've been braising that. First I seared it off, a little salt and pepper, seared it off a little olive oil. Uh, I've got jalapenos and, and some onions and some bell pepper, some fennel. Oh, the fennel and the balsamic go together great. But what I did is I just dropped it in here and cooling down the temperature and releasing the steam, I'm gonna be able to open this up a lot quicker than I would normally be able to if I just released the steam on the stove. You hear that? 
Oh, it's fantastic. Best trick in the world. Because a lot of times you're sitting there waiting for it to just kind of decompress before you can get it to open. So let's see. Let's see if we're successful with it. Voila. So you took it from super screaming hot at 15 pounds per square inch, the normal temp the normal pressure that you'd be cooking a pressure cooker with, and brought it down that quick by the ice bath. Okay. So here's that leg of lamb. And when I say fall apart tender, I can barely get it out. I'll have to bring this over here. Oh, just gorgeous. Now I even took the bones, the leg bone, and roasted it off. Oh, this is exactly what we're talking about. All kinds of flavor built into the bottom of this. Get the last little bits here. And all that marrow inside the legs, you know that's where the flavor's coming from, okay? Let me hold this off to the side. There. Another pan. I'm gonna strain the liquid now. You really got to remember that little technique that I was just showing you about throwing the ice bath. I tell you, I've watched so many people sit there and it's like, is the pressure cooker done? Is it done? Is it done? That way right there, we did it in literally seconds. Okay. The last little bit of the braising liquid. Perfect. And back onto the stove. Okay. Look at that. Spoon that right over the top. You've got, I'm telling you, talk about tender lamb. I mean, it's just fork fall apart. And you know that everybody's got their traditions and what they like. Our family, we just can't stick with one. Oh, we'll do a couple of the basics, but I gotta tell you something. Just the way that this is looking right now, this might make it, this might make it to next year's menu. All right, let's give this a little taste. All right. Okay. There's also a touch of nutmeg in there. But look at this. When you get this leg of lamb that's just that, I mean, it looks like pulled pork. Huh? That's winner, winner, lamb dinner. Sweet potato gratin. I know you've seen sweet potatoes done a bunch of ways. I'm not a big sweet potato casserole guy, and don't talk to me about marshmallows and brown sugar and all that. I'm not into it. But when you take sweet potatoes and put it with some onions and do what we're gonna do on the grill, we're gonna have the smokiness of the grill, we're gonna put a little char on it, we're gonna put it together with some half and half and a little bit of time, you wait, you're gonna love these. So I peeled the sweet potatoes, real fun task. Um, I'm cutting them, don't worry about that one, you gotta offer one up. Um, take the ends off, try to get uniform size, we'll hit them with a little bit of uh, salt, pepper, and olive oil and go to the grill. Started it with charcoal, got some nice oak on there. There we go. Okay, so those are all done. Let me grab a sheet tray. Slide them onto a sheet tray. We hit a little bit of olive oil, salt, pepper, and then we'll talk about what's gonna ride shotgun on this gratin dish. How about, yeah, exactly, some sweet onions. Vidalia onions to be exact. So grab a couple Vidalia. There we go. Some olive oil drizzle, fresh cracked black pepper, and some salt. I got dogs barking in the backyard, hanging out in my back. Listen, this is my favorite time. Chilling back here, kids aren't running around, pool's not going nuts, dogs aren't begging, somebody's dog's barking, and I'm cooking and you're hanging, good deal. Okay, we move this around. We'll go down with the onions here. Having that type of grill where you can take small onions or uh, potatoes that would normally fall through the grates and where you can get that radiant heat and you can get some of that smoke flavor coming through it just takes a regular gratin to the next level. So now we're gonna make the half and half mixture that we're gonna pour over this gratin. So we're gonna kind of partially cook the potatoes here. Not all the way, they're still gonna have to go in the oven. But what we're gonna do, we'll get a couple cups of half and half in there. You know what makes my mouth water also? Horseradish. Talk about bringing up the flavor. I don't know, four tablespoons in here. I don't think you could do too much in this. And there we go. Awesome. Uh, now we'll get a little bit of thyme in there. They can just fall right in. They're gonna steep a little bit in this half and half. Okay. There, little S&P. This is sweet potatoes that have gone savory. The thyme in the half and half, the horseradish, 
harvest these off. I got some Vidalia onions, and I'm looking for that. I want that color. I don't want boring gratin that just kind of looks like it's just, uh, you know, it's just been sitting there simmering in milk. Okay, we'll bring that off. So the gratin was three layers. I layered it with the Gruyere. Then you put the sweet potato, and then you put the caramelized onions, and then you repeat that three times. Perfect. And then you put some more of the cheese on top. This is where the, it all comes together as we pour this right on top. Horseradish, thyme. See that horseradish coming out right there? Kind of move that around a little bit. That horseradish spread out. That's just gonna soak right down into it. Fantastic. Now, we'll do that. Throw some foil on it. The wood-fired oven's rocking right around, I don't know, 350, maybe 400. 350 is what we're looking for, so we'll have to keep an eye on it. And we'll let this go for about 30 minutes. I put it on the sheet tray just in case we get a little bit of a bubble over. I don't want it burning the deck of the oven. It definitely changes the flavor of pizza. But if you have a regular conventional oven, 350, do the tray idea. It'll save you from having to do the cleanup. Okay, in we go. Uh -huh. It's gonna be hot. But look at that bubbling madness. Sweet potatoes done in this real savory style. No brown sugar marshmallows on this. Are you kidding me? Oh, that is outrageous. Okay, so now what I need to do, slide it back in, let it brown on top a little bit. But it is going good. Sweet potato onion gratin, baked with thyme, horseradish, and Gruyere cheese until bubbly. I mean, these flavors are on point. I've got some acorn squash in the oven, kind of roasting down. I'm gonna start some shallots with a little bit of this uh, olive oil, kind of caramelize these bad boys up. It's gonna be the basis of the soup. Okay, so I'm gonna get these down. That pan was super hot, so I didn't put my butter in yet, but let me throw a little butter in now. Some great flavor out of this. Okay, we'll just reduce the heat a little bit. The Dutch oven was waiting for me to hurry up. And let them kind of go low and slow. I really want to pull some of the flavor out of this and let these caramelize. Let's take a look at that squash. That's what I'm talking about. Look at those bad boys all roasted up. The garlic in there, even a little bit of moisture inside of it, that's all flavor. My shallots look really nice in here. Now it's time to deglaze the bottom of this pan. We'll grab a little chicken stock for that. So that's what we've got. We're letting the uh, acorn uh, squash kind of cool down before we scoop it out, get it into here. I'm gonna deglaze with the chicken stock. This will be the base of the soup. Outrageous. I think it'd just be great like this, but we're making this dynamite soup and I got some shallots and chicken stock doing time over here, simmering nicely. And inside of the squash and the cavities, I put some uh, shallots, so that roasted with them. Those are gonna go right into the soup. Actually, everybody's gonna go into the soup. Let me see, I've got the shallots, some roasted garlic, that'll be really nice. And then the uh, squash meat itself goes right in. That'll make it nice and creamy. Just a touch of cayenne, not too much, about a quarter teaspoon. And about the same on the white pepper. A little dried sage, we all know what that's like, the rub sage, okay? and then some savory, which you don't hear a lot of times. And this has kind of got like a little lemony, uh, almost dried arugula idea, but a little bit more citrusy. Okay, some uh, Worcestershire sauce, a tablespoon of that in. Okay, so let me just give this a quick little buzz. These immersion blenders, I love them because we don't have to take all the soup out and hit it into the blender right now and then pour it back in because I want to continue cooking. I just sit here and do this, kind of get all the big pieces ground up. Let it continue to simmer. Over to this acorn squash soup. A little olive oil goes in. Some grated Parmesan cheese. Just a touch. Adds a little bit of salt to that, but this was seasoned really nice. So we'll stir that around. Okay, now look at these crostinis I got sitting over here. Chopped up some pistachios, hit a little Parmesan cheese, buttered up that baguette, popped it in the oven, and look at that. This is... Not your everyday soup, but tell me that's not gonna be nice and hearty on a cold winter day, especially during the holidays. I'll just put a little, you see here, I'll use my uh, spoon so it doesn't just kind of clump right in the middle. There we go. I like that one. Float that bad boy right on top of there. And now let me get a taste of that. The roasted acorn, the garlic was roasted with it, the shallots, the chicken stock, the savory. Mm. Smoked prime rib. Sliced and served with a brown butter garlic sauce. We'll get it going with the basics. 
a little kosher salt, a little extra kosher salt, some fresh cracked black pepper, a little dry mustard, granulated garlic, paprika, and a touch of some cayenne, just a little bit of heat, not too much. Okay, now mix this up, rub it on top, rub it on the sides, okay? Now we're gonna let this stand. It's a little room temperature. You see how easy it moves around? That's gonna help us when we go and sear this, a cast iron skillet. So I've got some lump charcoal as well as some briquettes. Nice consistency burn with the briquettes and that flavor coming out of that lump charcoal. Gonna dump it right down in here. Trying to keep it almost on one side. Now I've got some wood chips over here, some apple and some hickory, two of my favorites. So we're gonna drop some of the apple and hickory soaking in water here so they don't just burn up right off the bat. So we'll lay those chips down on there. We'll just leave a little bit of that water and we'll lay this down here. We're kind of doing an indirect cooking right now. So I'm gonna drop this. Take this, let this heat up. I got the vent on the bottom open, vent on the top open. We're creating the convection. We're feeling it, it's coming through. This is indirect cooking, as a friend of mine would tell me. And I'm gonna season the bottom of this cast iron skillet, whoa, with some of these fresh herbs. I've got some thyme. I got some rosemary, of course, a little bit of oregano, and I'm just kind of getting the bottom of that pan just nice and well seasoned. You can smell it right now. I'm gonna use this later, so I'll hold tight with that, okay? Here it is, the star of the show, gonna wow everybody. That standing rib roast, bone in, seasoned salt and pepper, drop it down, sear all the sides, here we go. Remember, this cast iron skillet was smoking hot and I dropped a cold piece of meat on it, kind of a room temperature piece of meat, but it'll cool down now. So it's gonna take a little bit more time to recover as I go to sear each side. Working the fat cap right now. Look at that, huh? Now we'll go to the side. And for good measure, a little bit on the bottom. All right. Now we'll go over to the barbecue. Look at all that smoke cooking out of there. Fantastic. Oh, that's Flavor City right there. All the coals on this side. And what I'm gonna do, this is the critical part. Bone, big side of the rib, eye of the meat over here. Bring it over and put that towards the main heat source, okay? Doing it about a quarter opening on both, the bottom and the top, so a little bit of smoke will be coming through. Two and a half hours at 225 degrees. Oh, one thing I forgot, hang on. I gotta drop this in. This is the fresh herbs that I took that I seasoned the pan with. I'm just gonna throw this right on top and just let that add some of its flavor. Okay, right now I'm gonna make a brown butter sauce and more than just a brown butter sauce, but this really fantastic, flavorful, almost like a steak sauce meets brown butter sauce. What I've got here is some garlic, some shallots, dropping that right in. Started with a cold pan. I don't want to drop that butter in too fast and have it burn on us right off the bat. I'll just throw all that parsley in. I'm gonna let this kinda just cook down a little bit. See where it's just starting to bubble, just starting to foam just a little bit. That's what we're looking for. Now we're gonna add a little demi-gloss. What's demi-gloss? Well, we got a little veal stock married with a little espanol sauce, one of the mother sauces. So we'll just put a touch of that in, and you love the richness that comes out of the demi-gloss. Get a little beef stock in there as well. About a cup of that, we're gonna really, now I can crank the heat up. Now I'm not worried about that butter burning any further. So about a cup of that, and then believe it or not, what you love with prime rib and steak, you love a little Worcestershire. So we'll put a healthy little dose of some Worcestershire. Let that reduce down, okay? And last but not least, I gotta pull this prime rib and let it rest that rib, let it rest. Now what I'm gonna do, I've let it rest. I'm just gonna come right in here, cut it off the bone. There we go. Nice end cut piece here for my dad. We're talking, and look at this, huh? There we go. Right up on top. Cooking it with the bone in, I'm telling you, makes all the difference in the world. Platter those up and that really big, nice end cap. Now we'll take some of this. I gotta check this. This is a huge reduction. We got butter, we've got garlic, we've got shallots, demi-gloss, little beef stock, Worcestershire. Oh, fantastic. 
and then we'll just give that a little drizzle, a little brown butter drizzle right over the top of this. Now, I know I'm not supposed to do this because I'm supposed to wait for my mom to come over from next door with a salad and the sides, but I gotta get a bite of this. I gotta get a bite of this. Let's see here, right up here at the eye, nice and tender. And the smoke is the kicker on this, you guys. Smoky, that garlic, that brown butter. Prime rib has so much available flavor. It will take that smoke on so great with all that fat. Cook low and slow, nice and tender. The dry rub on the outside, 